hot seller? Tell him. Tell him. Tell us. Tell us. So the, the inspiration behind these recipes are uh, Susan really bugging us, asking <laughs> us to enter into the competition. And so, like, at the last moment, we just had like five minutes. We were like, hey, this is what we're going to do. So she wrote it down, and then we were here. <laughs> Susan Wells over here. Susan, you, you were the inspiration behind the recipe. Good job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, in the middle. Rolando, what was the inspiration behind your recipe? Uh, basically, I'm just, uh, like we said, you know, Mickey, he came to us uh, a couple weeks, and uh, at the last minute, he was like, dude, I need to come with the recipe. I came up on the spot, you know, I was thinking about the ingredients that were in my, in my grandmother's uh, pantry growing up, you know, basically most of the ingredients here are, you know, Mexican, so, you know, that's, growing up, that's basically what I see. so I'm using um, some of the chipotle chilies, some of the, uh, my grandma used to make hot chocolate, so I'm using some of that Mexican uh, chocolate for the rub. And so basically it's just stuff that I grew up with and I came, came up with that. It smells delicious. It really does. You guys uh, down here, how are we doing? What's the inspiration for your recipe? Uh, well, more often than not, beer is inspiration for uh, the recipes we do at the pub. It's an inspiring beverage. So, so I'll take a steak and a beer. Hold the steak. There you go. Right on the Steak on the side. Uh, steak and big kind of nutty, roasty, molassesy, chocolatey beers tend to go well together. I feel with the grill marks and the smoke and that kind of character you get from the uh, from the grill or or pan and caramelization. So went with an imperial stout here. Started thinking of spices that would work well, and kind of took an Asian route, Chinese fire spice, and then uh, felt like some uh, acidity was needed, possibly to kind of cut through some of the fat and probably the richness of it. But that's going to be the sauce. So went with like a kind of citrus beer and vinaigrette. Very good. I tell you, it sure smells good. You guys, judges, are you are you getting the whiff of this? What do you guys think? It smells amazing. You know, smell is obviously uh, a huge part of taste and, and what we do with food. So, very exciting to, to see what what all this is coming into. Well, we got uh, 14 minutes left. This is about the time that the, these chefs need a little encouragement, huh? All right, let's go. Bringing them down the home stretch. I smell coffee uh, brewing. Rolando, is that from your area? I smell coffee. Who's got the coffee going? Ah, okay. Yeah, give me some too. That's what. So yeah, everybody out there. I mean, look, I'm looking at ingredients. I see thyme, chipolini onions, bacon, garlic, chilies, um, cumin, spices, and all of those things. You know, they permeate that steak and that muscle, and just give so much flavor. So, all of these look equally delicious so far. Well, one of the, uh, as many of you know, uh, with beef or e even other proteins, but especially we've seen it in beef, the um, trick these days is making a lot out of a little, right? So taking some cuts that are not so popular and kicking them up a notch, right? And that's what we're hoping these recipes can do is inspire you guys to, to take a cut of meat that is uh, maybe not so popular and making it a hit in your restaurant. Therefore, obviously making uh, better food costs, right?